How many people died so little Matty Hancock could get his little headline? How many people were sent, like lambs to the slaughter, sacrificed at the altar of brand Hancock? Does Hancock have blood on his hands? A bombshell cachet of then Health Secretary Matt Hancock's WhatsApp messages has been released in The Telegraph today, and it appears to show that the thing Matt Hancock cared most about was his own reputation, about a cheap front-page story saying he'd hit his 100,000 community tests, and it looks like he cared more about that than he did about the lives of vulnerable elderly people, and about them at the very least, at the very least, being able to hold a loved one's hands as they took their final breaths. Let's remind ourselves, shall we, of Matt Hancock's big, bold target. I am now setting the goal of 100,000 tests per day by the end of this month. Well, his WhatsApp messages appear to show that he didn't want to use up COVID tests on everyone coming in and out of care homes because it would muddy the waters on his 100k tests a day target. But the team on the Dan Wilson Tonight Show have unearthed a clip of him on this very show saying something very different. The start of the pandemic, not to discharge hospital patients into care homes without a test. So they warn you of that? We didn't have the enough tests available to be able to do that without removing tests from mm -hmm. other people for whom they were a life-saving okay, matter. But, and let me but just... do you acknowledge you were warned of that? Um, I don't have recollection of that. So what was it then, Matt? Was it not enough tests or letting old people die so that you could use those tests elsewhere and seem like the big man in the paper? So you could stand at your little plinth and say this. At the beginning of last month, at this podium, I set a goal that anyone who needs a test should get a test. And that, as a nation, we should achieve 100,000 tests per day. I can announce that we have met our goal. Mm. Well, do you remember the images of frail 90-year-old and 100-year-old dementia sufferers screaming and howling through glass doors as their families shouted, we love you, we miss you, at them? Do you remember people getting a care nurse to hold a phone to grandma's ear so that they could whisper some words of comfort as she snatched her final breaths. And now, shall we all remember why we weren't allowed to be there in person? Right from the start, we've tried to throw a protective ring around our care homes. But it wasn't a protective ring, was it, Matt? He must have known people with COVID were being discharged from hospital and put into care homes. What these messages appear to show is that he knew other people were coming in and out of care homes without being tested. So why couldn't you? Now, it's a very sad fact that most people in care homes, it's uncomfortable to say this, but I will say it, it's a sad fact that most people in care homes were quite likely to die soon anyway. And I think that most of them would have rather died of COVID, which they weren't shielded from anyway, actually, than not see their loved ones. It was cruel and inhumane for the elderly to be locked in tiny rooms in COVID-riddled care homes, denied visits from their families. But people accepted it based on the premise that they were contributing to a protective ring of steel. And if that protective ring never existed, then was it all based on lies? And in my opinion, if it was, it goes beyond being cruel and inhumane and borders on the criminal. But it's not just care homes. Oh, no, do you remember shielding? Shielding, yeah? Basically, the message was, if you've got an elderly or vulnerable loved one who isn't in a care home, turn their actual home into a prison to protect them. Well, it turns out that Hancock was told by top scientific advisers that shielding wasn't very effective. He went ahead with it anyway. So he wasn't following the science, was he? Now, people will be watching this and they will be shouting at their screens. I can almost hear you. Patrick, hindsight is twenty twenty. I get that. I get that. But this isn't really about hindsight or about understandable and forgivable mistakes being made in the chaos. This, for me, is about people's lives being ruined based, potentially, on lies. Only to come home in the evening, look at him, people would have been facing a situation where they went to their loved one's graves and laid flowers, and then come home in the evening and see Matt Hancock's grinning face on the TV as he took the public for one more ride, this time all the way to the bank. This is about the millions of people who felt that Matt Hancock ruined their loved one lives. 
and then having to watch him try to resurrect his own professional life by appearing on I'm a Celeb, by releasing a book in a desperate bid to attempt to control the narrative. Now, some people will have had to endure that, laying their flowers on their loved one grave, not being allowed to kiss their loved ones goodbye, and then coming home in the evening and seeing Hancock's grinning face as he took the public on that ride. People make mistakes. People mess up. There is not a man or woman alive who would have got everything right during the pandemic. But Hancock could have done the decent thing and disappeared from public life. Instead, he chose to try to get rich off the back of being health minister during a pandemic. He chose to shamelessly parade himself to try and win public sympathy. Now, I think in the cold light of day, that's pretty scummy. And now he's being served the receipts.